Big news today in the future of Metro. The transit agency announced its new general manager. I'm excited to be here this morning and I'm honored to be named as the next uh, general manager and CEO of WMATA. A little bit of surprise that this was their choice for general manager. When you think of someone who's going to lead Metro, you might think of someone coming from a New York City, a San Francisco, a Chicago, a Boston, something along those lines. So an Austin, Texas pick, while a little bit outside the box, is also a, a little bit maybe not the choice that you would think uh, was going to happen. But we're going to have to see you know, who Randy Clark is, what he can provide to the job. I do know in talking to Metro's board chair, they like his youth a little bit. Uh, they like a bit of his flash. They like his media presence, a little bit of his savvy. Um, and they like some of the ideas that he was presenting in Austin, Texas. One of the things that he was really trying to do was, you know, come up with this green fleet of vehicles in Austin. Obviously a much, much smaller system, but that's something that Metro has also been trying to do. The electrification of buses, greener uh, pushes for trains and, and buses and stations and stormwater management and all that kind of stuff. So I think a lot of that played into it. And I think he just flat out impressed uh, the Metro people, uh, the Metro board when they interviewed him because we had heard that there were about 20 candidates or so who were up for this job including some people internally in Metro. We do know for a fact that there were a couple of higher ups in Metro who wanted that position. Uh, clearly they didn't get it. So here we are with Randy Clark who comes to Metro in late summer. Um, he's gonna be taking over what is a troubled agency at the moment. Gotta fix the 7000 series issue, but more importantly, he's gotta get riders to come back to the system. I think that we could fix everything we want we could go through platform fixes, we can go through train fixes, buses, whatever, but none of that matters if the riders don't come back. And when you think about the fact that Metro is at 35% of its pre-pandemic ridership right now, only 35% of the people who were riding are actually riding right now, well, that's a big gap. And if Metro can't get those riders to come back, a lot falls apart, financials fall apart, uh, the system itself falls apart. Do you need enough trains and buses, all that? kind of factors into it, so we'll have to see. You know, one of the things you hear about Metro when you think about it over the years is their culture, their safety culture, just the way that they operate as a unit. Uh, and some of that stuff has to change. If you look at the last couple of general managers who are leaving, you know, we're talking about John Cato, Rich Sarles, now Paul Wiedefeld, all three of those main general managers are leaving with some sort of controversy uh, that they have been dealing with. And so that goes back to a safety culture. Do they have enough uh, to really kind of root that out? And that is something that Randy Clark is gonna have to get his hands around. Paul Wiedefeld tried to do that. He tried to take on unions. He tried to fire some Metro employees. He tried to change a, a safety perspective of things that were going on, but that's not always the easiest thing to do uh, when you have a certain way that things have been operating for a longer time. So, you know, a lot of general managers come in here, they preach a safety uh, message, they say, you know, safety before service. In other words, we gotta make sure things are safe first, but you don't always see it. And, you know, to be honest, this 7,000 series issue that we're dealing with right now, it's just kind of a microcosm of that. When you think about that, Metro knew about this problem with these brand new rail cars for years uh, and still was allowing them to get fixed and then put back on the tracks. And it wasn't until a derailment, uh, thankfully no one was seriously hurt, but it wasn't until that derailment that we really figured out what was going on with these rail cars. Is this unusual to have this many GMs in this period of time for a metro system? Um, you know, I would say that, yeah, it's it's about the average breadth. Paul Wiedefeld has been here for about six to seven years. Uh, it is a high profile job. It's, uh, you know, a job that is quite frankly thankless. <laughs> Uh, not one that a lot of people would be willing to take on. So there is turnover uh, with the Metro position. The, the thing is though, it's not something that you can just come to for a year or two and then leave and try to make a meaningful, impactful change. You really have to dig in, you have to preach this message, you have to get in there, lay your vision, and then try to make it all work with trains and buses, with the transit system, with the police system. There's so many moving parts to the Metro system that have to be dealt with. And, and this is something that I don't think a lot of people know about Metro. They're an agency of about 11,000 people. That is huge, that's massive. And so for one person to come in with a game plan and try to get all that fixed, 
and deal with the board and deal with the riders, deal with the financial challenges, deal with Congress who tries to get in, deal with DC, Maryland and Virginia, three separate entities and the federal government also, you know, getting involved. It's a lot to really handle. I don't think it's till you get in here in this job uh, that you really figure out this is a big one. We want to know what you think the biggest priority is for Metro's new general manager. We invite you to weigh in and answer right now at NBCWashington.com. The riders know who is in charge of the Metro system, uh, maybe more so than even in New York, uh, Chicago or LA or San Francisco. They know who is in charge. Uh, they knew exactly who Paul Wiedefeld was. They knew exactly who Rich Sarles was. They knew exactly who John Cato was. They're going to know exactly who Randy Clark is. Uh, now, to Clark's credit, he says that he's going to be on the system riding all the time. He's a daily uh, transit user. So he says he and his wife will be out there. And quite frankly, riders want to see that. They want to be able to come up to you uh, and tell you what the problems are, what, what they're facing, what their issues are. So he'll get an earful from riders uh, who are on the system with him. But it isn't until you really ride that on a daily basis that you can see what the problems are, that you can really experience it. If you just kind of parachute in and out, it doesn't really work that way. You got to kind of get in there and see what people are going through for sure. You know, a lot of people say, why is this guy's salary on par with the President of the United States? Randy Clark's going to be paid about $485,000 a year. He's going to get $4,000 a month for a relocation bonus, plus he gets other bonuses. So all told, about a half a million dollars a year to run the metro system. But when you look at the level of scrutiny that this position gets, I'm not sure in our region that there's a more high profile position that actually people are interacting and dealing with and telling you how they feel on a daily basis. We certainly have a ridership that lets management know what they feel. Come to a Metro board meeting or, or look at one online and you'll see all sorts of public comment. Uh, they have to limit it as a matter of fact a lot because people come and ride. So he's gonna have a big challenge here. And, and the bottom line is, for all the complaining that goes on about the Metro system, everybody just wants it to work. Because when it works, there's really nothing better. There's no better way to get around our region. It's quite frankly, the skeletal system of our region. There's so much housing that's being built around it. There's so much future housing that's being built around it. So much is dependent on the Metro system and so many people want it to work. It's just when it doesn't work and when you're stuck on it and when you're going through these costly, lengthy delays and when you're being told it's getting better when it really isn't, that is a tough pill for riders to swallow. A lot of people will say, you know, uh, I don't mind that I'm paying for Metro. I don't even mind if there's gonna be a fare increase. I just want it to work. I want it to work for me and get me from point A to point B. And that for a long time is something that Metro has had a hard time doing. Getting trains and buses to show up frequently on time and get people there safely. That's really all people want. Uh, and if Randy Clark can make that happen, then he's gonna be a good general manager. If he can't, he's certainly gonna hear about it. And I believe the future here is very bright. So we're going to have some tough challenges ahead. Um, you know, I, I'm convinced that Paul and the team are doing uh, everything they can, and you know, the seven thousands and other other issues are going to obviously get resolved. Uh, you know, we're going to have to have a, a, a serious conversation uh, regionally about commuting patterns and all, but also activity and whether a, a trip at 10 o'clock at night and how that you know is equivalency to uh, a morning rush hour uh, trip. And so I think these are good conversations to have with the community and together we can build consensus and figure out the future.